Thanks for coming. Um, yes. And clearly your town remembers you. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. I'm still of this town. Yes. I still am a homeowner, and I love it. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't think actually, before I get to the housekeeping, I don't think I've ever gotten a, a clapping before I got onto the stage. So yeah. congratulations. Yes. <laughs> right. um, so uh, hello, and uh, welcome to today's Commonwealth Club World Affairs Program. Um, my name is Reed Hoffman, uh, partner at Greylock, and I'm delighted to be here. It's my pleasure to introduce someone who's not only a legend. In, Thank uh, you, tech, legend, for tech, calling me a legend. Yeah, tech journalism. <laughs> Um, but, you know, a friend, frequent sparring partner, um, and the author uh, of a great new book, The Bur uh, Burn Book, A Tech Love Story. Um, and, uh, you know, Karen and I have known each other for more years than either of us. 30. probably, pro Yeah, probably. Well, look, I was about to say we wouldn't want to say, <laughs> but clearly one of us is a journalist. Uh, and um, <laughs> the, uh, and uh, she's uh, known for asking tough questions. And uh, among the reasons I was delighted to, to be here is I get to ask some of the tough Good. questions. Good, I'm so excited. It'll be finally, fun. finally. Yes. Um, and so, you know, we'll see where this goes. Um, yeah. I also think that people should understand you not just as a journalist and a truth teller, um, but also as an entrepreneur, Thank you. right? Um, yeah. You know, because you've been you know, innovating within the, the 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 journalism ecosystem, the tech media ecosystem, and a bunch of things. And I think that's been a real sure. a real contribution. So, welcome back Thank to you. the Commonwealth Club. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. So, let's uh, kick it off uh, the way you do in your book. Mm -hmm. As it turned out. It was capitalism, after all. Yes, yes, that was my, you don't have to read anything else. That's really what the book's <laughs> yes. about. Um, um, so a great line. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. You know, possibly cynical. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you know the positive, I actually think of you as actually a tech optimist. Mm -hmm. um, so, so why did you open your book that way? What, 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 what caused you to think that way? Um, because, I, by the way, if, is it a Mark Andreessen tech optimist? Because please don't put me with him in any way, shape, or form. But yes, I am a tech optimist. Not an optimist. No, I'm, a pes I'm an optimistic pessimist. Yes. I assume the worst, and I'm thrilled when the best happens. Um, but we just started off, and there's, I wrote it in a certain way, so it turns out, and after all, was because when I got here, and as you recall, when we met, and I think you were one of ones that I actually believed wanted to do good mm. things. Everyone else. Hopefully it's still present tense. It is present okay, tense. Is. You're doing a good job right now. Um, but one of the. Um, <laughs> All right. uh, That's one of the things I love about Kara. It's like, but I'm keeping attention. I am paying attention. <laughs> um, I, I really wanted to say, because when I got here, there was this whole idea, and you remember, and we were just reminiscing backstage, there was an ethos here. There was a feeling of newness, of, of pioneering. Uh, it, it was a new industry being born. And so there was the excitement around that. And of course, you're always very positive during those times. And one of the things that a lot of the tech entrepreneurs did at the time, and some of them meant it, others not so much, mm. um, were this idea that we're here to save humanity, make things better. It was that Star Trek vision of the universe. And I talk about that, that there's a Star Trek mentality mm. among certain in tech. Um, when in fact it really is more Star Wars, when there, it, where, where things are a little more difficult, mm -hmm. that, that evil tends to prevail, that the heroes are very flawed and also they don't win a lot. They really don't. Mm -hmm. If you really take apart Star Wars, I've interviewed George Lucas about this, it's a dark tale. Mm -hmm. Star Trek isn't. And so there was a sort of Star Trek-y where the villains turn out to be good and everyone gets along and look, it's so diverse and you know, there, there's struggles, but really not. It's a very simplistic idea of humanity and a good one. And so I, I, I was sort of bothered, and I, I went back and looked at some of my early uh, articles. I was uh, down with this. I wrote a story about the 10 things tech people will tell you that aren't true, including we're here to save the world, mm -hmm. um, including there's no titles here, when in fact there was power, <laughs> right? You know, oh, I'm Chief Yahoo, and I'm like, and yet, you know, or whatever. And the only person who actually did articulate it honestly was Mark Zuckerberg, which was the I'm the CEO bitch <laughs> thing, which I was like, thank you, that's correct, you are, and you control everything. Yeah. Although he later would lapse into this, he'd call me, he'd be like, it's all about the community. I'm like, well, why do you control the whole community? And he's like, but it's the community. And I'm like, and yet you can't be fired. So it's not about the community, you, and you make all the decisions. And so, um, so so we, um, so I, I really wanted to say, just like Wall Street insurance, these are 
you're just like them. Like you're not like you don't have a Wall Street person coming up to you and saying, what I really want is world peace. They never they'd say, <laughs> I want to make money because I like money and I like my house in Connecticut and whatever. Um, and so I wanted to say, look, this was all about money and power. And and that's OK if we admit that that's what it's about. Yeah. Although, I mean, part of the reason I wanted to kick off here mm -hmm. and, you know, I love both your role um, as the kind of, uh, you know, watch person mm -hmm. of the industry and also uh, the asking the hard question, I think is really important because there is a whole bunch of BS and a whole bunch yes. of people who are like hypocrites, like, you know, I'm doing this thing, I, 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 I'm doing this, you know, uh, ele electric uh, uh, cigarettes thing to change the world. Right, like, right, okay. right. The dating service, <laughs> yes. the digital dry cleaning service, yes. that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's exhausting after right. a while. And, you know, well characterized by the uh, Silicon Valley HBO series yes. on this. And, um, but, but also, part of the challenge is, is to get, uh, I don't know of a way to get tech to scale other than by companies. Right. Right. And so and there are places where tech companies actually can have a really good yes. positive impact on the yes. world. Sure. And so it's not necessarily a false. Uh, it's not. A no, but it's the it's the it, you know, it's the narcissistic tendencies that drive yeah. me crazy. It's the idea that you're at the center of the universe, that this is, you know, someone really smart. Uh, ben Meserich has written a book, another book. He wrote the first Facebook mm -hmm book that became Social Network. Um, he said, you know, he was talking specifically about Elon, but, you know, a lot of these characters think this is a video game and they're ready player one. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say, like, look, this isn't, they're not doing this out of the kindness of their heart, even if there might be good outcomes. And one of the reasons there's bad outcomes is because they're pretending and cosplaying that it's something other than it is, which is, we're going to, you know, we're, we're a construction company. We're building that highway the way we want to do it, or we're doing this. And so I just would, I would really like them to admit what they're doing is building companies, which is great. But a lot of it was this touchy-feely idea. And it's not because it was California, not because it was San Francisco. They really did see themselves because they were steeped in science fiction. They were steeped in game playing, uh, games and stuff. They saw themselves as like, you know, even Apple, when they put the pirate flag up, mm -hmm. I was like, you're not pirates, give me a break. Like, <laughs> you're a giant mega corporation, we're pirates. I was like, stop it. Like, or, or more to the more, which was around, and I think you were not like this, which is why I like you, was, you know, um, <laughs> you were, um, they were uh, toys. There was a lot of toys. There was a lot of primary colors. It was a lot like you're in a nursery school. Yeah. Essentially, um, and so uh, you know, we have a pogo stick, Kara. I'm like, good for you. I, I had one when I was seven, and it's gone. Like now, or or there's a scene in the book with Excite um, where they had a. First of all, they had a garage, a fake garage door to show their roots. Uh, yes. Like whatever, <laughs> yes. it's so ridiculous and performative. And they thought I'd be impressed and put it in the story, which I declined to. Or and then they had a slide, which they between the second. Remember that the slide? Yes. And they're like, go down the slide. I was like, fuck you, I'm not going down a slide. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, I'm 30, whatever. I didn't like it five, when I was five. I definitely don't like it when I'm 36 or whatever. Um, or, you know, even Jeff Bezos with that door. Do you remember the door? Mm -hmm. yeah, right? What he would do is he said, um, and he wanted it in all the stories. Like, mm -hmm. that's what was clear. He was, he, it was all PR, essentially. But he's like, we're saving money here, so everybody works on a door. And I was like, you know, IKEA costs a lot less. I'm sorry. Like, I, a door. Oh, a door. Like, aren't you? And saw horses. I was like, I don't understand it. And so the, the performative nature, even, you know, and when Elon, when he was doing the I'm sleeping in the factory floor, I'm like, there's a motel next door. Stop it. Like, stop this. And, and then I began to realize it was cosplaying. It's like, I'm playing a character of this person. And that gets exhausting. Well, one of the things I think... Um, I think pointing out the 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 uh, incongruities in the stories is, is extremely important. It is also, though, part of that. the The work is so hard in building these scale companies. Sure, are. you do need some kind of almost like the funny story. thing is, you, yeah, some kind of story about what we're doing and kind of why that is. And obviously, um, I think one can do it without uh, certain forms of silliness. Yes, um, but the. But you know, when you look across them, it's like it's part of the reason why you, you look across the like uh, a lot of these huge tech companies, mm -hmm. 
And they're all built with stories like this. Right, right. Everybody has one. Everybody yeah. has like the origin story. And often the DNA of a company, as you know, is like the founders yes. or that whatever that origin story is. And there's a lot of reality in it yeah. and, about, and about their humanness and their struggle. And, you know, you and, and the relentlessness c yeah. comes from their story. At the same time, I was just watching a video of Mark Andreessen talking about, you know, it's really painful. It's really hard. It's so hard. So I'm like, you know how hard it is? to like drive a fucking bus, dude? Like how hard is it to like, like really? Do, do you have a bus driver who goes, it's really hard that I had to get up this morning and I have to feed my kids and I have to do six jobs and it's really hard. You know how hard it is to do what I do? And to hear it from elite people is, yeah. I'm sorry, it's yeah. not that different. Everyone's job is hard and so I get that. And I don't, I think most, would, what I do think stories do matter. When I covered AOL, their narrative was, uh, everybody was a dinosaur. They had a big dinosaur, and Microsoft was particularly aggressive towards AOL. And so they, Ted Leonsis built an entire narrative around where the little guys beaten the dinosaur, the big, and they would have people sign it and they'd cheer. And th I, I, I get it. It's a team thing. Like yeah. we're part of a team, or Netscape did that, or any company you point to has to. You have to have a foe, and you have to have you know a story, and here's why we're doing it, and. I get it. I get it. It's just that they like to self-aggrandize when other people just have a job, right? Kind of stuff. It has to be the great, the great struggle. And I, I get, I do get that idea about inspirational things. And but I think you're inspired by making great products and not hurting people. That would be my inspiration, yeah, for example. Hundred percent. And actually, one of the things that I sometimes take some of my, you know, tech, uh, industry colleagues to task for is they like, mm -hmm. like. Um, Oh, uh, you know, like uh, she's beating up on us, mm -hmm. and it's like cry yeah. me a river right. from where I, you thank are. Thank you for saying that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. she's beating up on us. Yes. It's you like, know, I, in some ways, one, I'm not their friend. I'm not. I know they. I'm friendly. Yes. And I think people are surprised how friendly I am. Um, and I know. Like, <laughs> I really am. I'm like, why should I? You know, you know, they're they're not my friends. They're just yeah. not my friends. And w when they're beating up on us, it has nothing to do with me by doing normal criticism. I did not. One of the things I went out of my way to do was I wasn't snarky, although I could say snarky things. But I, it was like, this is what I think it is. And for some reason, it hurt them personally. Mm. And there was a really good scene in this book where I do this, where um, I know the Google guys really well. My ex-wife worked there, but it was not until much later. I covered them for a long time before she worked there, by the way, for, for people who don't realize that. Mm -hmm. um, and she was at Planet Out, like she ran Planet Out. Um, and uh, and they, they were trying to buy Yahoo or get control of Yahoo. And at the time, that would have given them more than 90% of the market, which I'm like, I'm sorry, that's called a monopoly in most people's parlance. And so I was very, I wrote a series of really tough articles. Like, let me tell you, I covered the Microsoft trial and this is worse because search was so important and was decimating advertising. And, and I was like, you can't have 94% and think it's good. Mm -hmm. And their attitude was like, we're good and we're going to make it better for everyone, even though we control it. We're the nice Borg. And I'm like, there's no such thing as a nice Borg. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, you know, we have we have bouncy balls and primary colors. We're not going to hurt you. And I'm like, you ever heard of, you know, like to serve man, that yes. Twilight Zone yes. thing? It's yes, a cookbook. Exactly. It's a yes. cookbook. You Wait, are, it's a cookbook. It's a, you're not here to help us. You're yes. here to eat us. I get it. Like the kind of thing. And so, um, and I kept saying to them, it's a cookbook. Yes. Um, and so they called me when I wrote this piece where I said, I wrote a piece about this thing, the, the government cannot allow this. I was quite vehement and I was aimed at government regulators. And uh, they were very hurt. They were very hurt. Mm. And because the line I had was, at least Microsoft knew they were thugs. And <laughs> is that hard? They were thugs. That's what they were doing. They were thuggish in their, in their corporate behavior. Yeah. And um, they called me, and they're like, that really hurt my feelings. And I was like, oh, come on. Grow the fuck. Grow a set or something. <laughs> and, and I was like, why did it hurt your feelings? And they're like, well, you know us. You know we're nice. It was, this was the conversation. You know we're nice. It wasn't very nice. And we're not thugs. And you know, we're not evil, as you know. Don't be. Um, and uh, you know, we're not evil. And I said, you know, 
I got to tell you something. I said, there's a poem by uh, Yeats, which is, uh, you know, there, some rough beast is slouching towards Bethlehem waiting to be born. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what? A beast? And I was like, oh, forget it. Like, I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> to. They could Google not the answer. Gonna yes, I was like, I'm not going to explain poetry to you, but it's a famous <laughs> poem. You should look it up. You should Google it. Um, and I was like, there is a, an element of evil coming because it's such yeah. a powerful platform. And I'm not particularly worried about you, although you've seen so many of these people transform into really loathsome creatures. Um, uh, I'm worried about the evil people coming because if, if this is this powerful, evil people are coming. They're gonna use these tools to hurt people and they're gonna use it for domination. Authoritarians are gonna love it. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about someone else who has 97% of the market and enormous wealth and power. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the evil people. And they just were like, what evil people? I'm like, do you know history? Do you understand? <laughs> like, like every single technology tool gets turned into a weapon. It mm -hmm. does, and if not first. Mm -hmm. And the key quote in this book is the Paul Virilio quote, which is, when you invent the ship, you invent the shipwreck. Yep. And my only question for all these people, and they found it offensive, was, I would like a lighthouse, if mm -hmm. you don't mind, because you're killing us. Mm -hmm. Like, what's wrong with a lighthouse? Well, a lighthouse gets in the way of our innovation. I was like, but shipwreck, shipwreck, shipwreck. Like, and I, I like the ships, but I also hate the shipwrecks. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point, is mm -hmm. we want the ships, we want to be able to use them, but we mm -hmm. also want to avoid the shipwrecks. But they don't care about the shipwrecks because it doesn't affect them. That is what I started to feel about a lot of people, is that they had a careless sense of the impact of things they did and of consequences, mm. which children do, mm. right? Mm. Children don't care about consequences, adults do. Mm. And adults take responsibility for consequences. So in part, I think that's a good, less, good part to another question I wanted to ask you, which is, you know, it's in part kind of a, uh, a statement about, you know, kind of the industry and the ways that we need to grow up mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. It's also in part a memoir. Mm -hmm. yes. And why did you decide on the memoir side? I didn't want to do that, actually. Oh. Um, I wanted just to say, here's some stories, mm. see you later. Um, <laughs> but my editor was my original, one of, one of the editors, I had, two, I had one main editor, but John Carp, who now runs Simon & Schuster, mm. in fact, now works for a private equity firm. Uh, he got bought up by it, which is astonishing what's happening in publishing, actually, from a business point of view. Um, he was my original editor on the AOL books I wrote, which I think were groundbreaking. Like, that was the first time people were like, what is this internet thing? Mm. Um, um, and, and that's what brought me here to Silicon Valley and to San Francisco. Um, and, and he was very adamant that I, initially he wanted me to write it. He wanted me to write, you know, I get approached, write the Yahoo story, write the Twitter story. Write, and I was like, no, thank you. I've done my coverage. And he wanted originally for me to do a fictional book. And by the way, I was an advisor to Silicon Valley. I helped oh, him come yeah. up with all oh, those that stories. Makes sense. Um, I know. <laughs> yes. the, 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 a light bulb goes I on. I know, right? Yeah, like yeah, um, conjoined triangles of success. That was yes. Dick Costello, yes, actually. Yes. Um, and that was actually Dick Costello's yeah. idea. Um, so, because uh, he was also an advisor yes. to them, um, and. Um, Oh, I'm losing my train of thought. What was I talking about? Memoir. Memoir. So, so he wanted me to get a fiction. He wanted to hire a fiction writer and have me write a fictional book about it and really lay the dirt, which I have a lot of it is not in here. Yeah. Like, I don't really go into people's personal lives, but I know everything about their personal life. <laughs> um, so, like, way far too much. Um, yes, I was about to say. And the therapy bill is... No, uh, yeah, they do. Some people started telling me, I was like, I don't want to know about your personal proclivities, if you don't mind. Um, and, and, and I thought, oh, that would be interesting and I could kill someone, finally. Like, someone I don't like. I was like, there could be a murder mystery and I could kill off the people I don't like and they'd know who they were, and, but I wouldn't actually kill them. So, and then I was like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't, it's not interesting in that. And I kept like pushing it off. And he said, it's gotta be about you. And I said, who cares about me? And he, he was like, no, you, it's gotta be your journey. You're like Nick in The Great Gatsby. Mm. And when he said that, that quote that starts the book in The Great Gatsby, they were careless people, Tom and Daisy. That was like, oh, I'm Nick. That's exactly who I am. I've seen it, and I got to tell it. And then when Walt Mossberg did not write his memoir, which he had a deal to do so, he just decided not to do it, I said, someone has to say, mm. right? Someone has to tell you mm. from history's sense. And we did it a lot through the Code Conference and All Things D conferences, because we have like astonishing history. You're, you've been on stage, a lot of people. Mm. We have an astonishing history of interviews of these mm. people at their peak. Yeah. Um, and so that was one way of doing it, but then it was like, this is what I think of them. This is what I thought. And I thought it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought the, I mean, look, you've done, on, both of you have done an amazing set of interviews. Mm -hmm. 
Obviously, the canonical one was the, the Gates Jobs one. Yeah, that but was that was spectacular. That was, wasn't it? <laughs> right. I mean, I know. Like being in the audience was like I know. mesmerizing. It was. It was yeah. because they didn't really like each other. That yes. they, they 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 reconciled a little bit when Steve was dying. Yes, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, they had a real they had a real com- competition. But we, Walt and I, felt that these are the two iconic figures, mm-hmm. right? Even though they didn't weren't the internet people, yes. they were the iconic figures of text. People looked up to them for various reasons. Gates for his business acumen, Steve for his inspirational design, just beauty of of product, right? A real product thing, and inspiration, like really, that what an inspirational set of. I mean, that guy had so many hits. It's crazy. Um, and so, um, and they were conjoined in so many ways that we felt they had to talk. And they had never done it, which was mm. incredible. And we knew they were compelled, like, they were like planets that went like this, right? Mm. Essentially. And Steve had this whole, like, Gates really, I always thought if they died on the same day, you know, sort of like the um, Adams and Jefferson, oh. mm-hmm. um, that that Steve, Steve Jobs' obituary would say, the greatest uh, visionary in technology died today. Mm-hmm. Gates, it would have been the world's richest man died today, right? <laughs> and he hated that. Yes. And so we always knew he wanted that yeah. encounter. And Steve was interested in it too, because he understood his place in history mm-hmm. very well. He was very, you know, he speaking of well-read, well-educated, very thoughtful about things outside of tech. And so we wanted to bring them together and we'd talk about the high ideas mm-hmm. of what they represented. Unfortunately, Steve, as usual, tried to, he was always pantsing Gates constantly, yes. constantly. <laughs> yes. And it was, he, it was indulgent on his part, but we did an interview. We each gave them slots, separate slots mm-hmm. at the conference, and uh, Gates sent Bomber, and Steve Bomber, and Jobs always did it himself, mm-hmm. always spoke for the company. And so he gets on stage with Walt, and Walt asked him just one of these soft, very easy questions, why do you think iTunes is the most popular uh, use of, of wi- on Windows, one of the most mm-hmm. popular third-party developers, and he said, and this was, and we had spent a lot of time getting them to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And and it was very, they were never going to remove themselves from it, but we released the press release the minute they said yes, so they couldn't yes. get out of it. And <laughs> yes. I have all kinds of tricks at my sleep. Yes. And um, Jobs looked at, at at Walt, and he goes, Walt. If you lived in hell and someone gave you ice water, you'd be happy too. And we were like, <laughs> yeah. and this was hours before the interview. And you knew what he was doing. Yes. Fucking with Gates. Yeah. Fucking with him. Yes. And I was, and he, then he smirked. And Steve had the best, he was like, you know, his little smirk. If you go look at it, he's got the best smirk of all time. And, you know, he was the cool kid. And Gates mm-hmm. wanted to be the cool kid. And so Gates shows up in the green room. He hears about it, of course. And, and the PR people were like, oh, my fucking God. Like, we were all like, oh, geez. And I was backstage. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, really? You couldn't just keep it to yourself, yes. like, that you're cooler than or at least for one more day. One more day. No, he couldn't. So Gates arrives in the, it was his stories in the book. He arrives in the green room um, very much, um, monosyllabic and you know he's already not the most loquacious person in the world and he's a hard time (laughs) interacting with people right and and i hadn't seen him rock in years and he started rocking again Mm -hmm. and you're like oh jesus (laughs) you know he was doing this he he, he, did anyway um so and he was and you're like hi and he's like hello like this, and you're like, oh fuck, this is gonna be, this is gonna suck. And he sat there and just seething. He was seething because once again, he'd been pantsed in front of Tex Elite by Steve Jobs. Like, who is cooler? He just is. He's just sorry. He's cooler, and and he's not saying a word. And we're like, oh, this is gonna be a terrible. We wanted them to have a rapport because they did have one. And then Steve walks in, smirky as ever, just shit eating grin, like. Like what I did to the nerd. I, <laughs> yeah. I shoved him in this locker once again. <laughs> yes. I have one again. I am the prom king. And, um, and he walks in and he's all smiling. We're like, you, <laughs> you buddy. And he sits down and we're trying to get them to talk. Like, we're going to do this. We want to keep it high level. We don't want to be about profits. We want to talk about big ideas. And Gates is rocking and not speaking. And Steve is just smirking. And we're like, <laughs> You're exactly the characters we thought you were. And, um, and so uh, at one point, it's, it, Gates just wasn't responding at all. And we asked him a question. We asked a question of them, and Gates goes, How would I know? I run hell. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And Steve, I've never, I can't believe this happened, but I swear, this is astonishing. Steve had a thing of ice water in his hand, like a bottle that was covered with condensation, yeah. just covered. Yeah. And he hands it to Gates and he goes, let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. So it was so great. And then it was fine. And I still, I tried to get a picture of them to get yeah. Kodak there yes. with one of their advanced digital mm. cameras. And Gates wouldn't do it. And I finally was like, look at me. 100 years from now, this will be the classic picture of the two of you. You're going to be dead in 100 years. Take the fucking picture. And he did. He did <laughs> yes. it. He listened to me. And so we had this beautiful portrait of them yes. together. And then, but then when we get on stage, I started off with a softball. And I said, what's something about your relationship people don't know? And I, I saw Jobs' little head go, light bulb go off. And he goes, you know, for many years now, we've been married. And, <laughs> and we're deeply in love or something like that. And I, and I was like, oh, no, the gay joke. And Gates doesn't know what to do because he's not quick on his feet. The yes. Jobs was. And he's like, what do I say? What do I say? Um, I don't want to be anti-gay. And yet I'm not gay, you know, like, <laughs> see, going like this, like on and on. And he's like, what do I do? What do I do? Because I can't see being gay. But I really I don't want people to think I'm gay or whatever. <laughs> and we're not gay, by the way. We're not. We've never had sex. You know, you can see it going on. And, on. and it was so funny. And and it, all he does is go. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's a great, go watch it. And Jobs, once again, smirks. <laughs> but he ended on a beautiful note. You remember that last yes, moment? What a great, he gave a, a Beatles yeah. quote that was great. It was yeah. a great interview. I should have quit right there. I, I, I actually thought Gates should have reached out and taken Jobs' hand. Oh, would he? Uh, yeah, that, and give him a yeah, kiss. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, that that yeah. was what I would have thought yeah, would have been yeah, the... Yeah, big, wet kiss. Yes. That would have been a great moment. <laughs> yes, right. No way, he wouldn't have done no, it. No, no, no. But, but even just taking the hand would have been, you He know, should have, but he can't. He yeah. doesn't have that ability. He's not that fast. <laughs> but, but, but in terms of like the tech industry becoming more mature, not you know, spinning you know, hypocritical fictions, understanding their role and responsibility, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Gates' life is a great art. 100%. Right? Yes, 100%. I think he has shifted. One time backstage, his, his former wife, uh, Melinda, was on stage, and she's really quite she's inspiring great. and has done all kinds of interesting yeah. things. I had met her when she was a product manager, mm -hmm. actually, at, at Microsoft. Um, and uh, she worked for Microsoft Bob, for the people who don't know <laughs> that particular. Uh, I don't think she was Clippy, but she was Microsoft <laughs> Bob. And... Um, I look up Clippy, it's really yeah, funny. Yeah. And if you know what that is, you're of a certain generation. Yes. Yeah. Um, we were backstage, and she was so great. And we, he and I had a very testy relationship, actually, uh, for a long time. Not recently, but, um, but he, uh, I, looked, I, I looked at him. I don't know why I say, I say things come out of my mouth. I'm a little like Steve Jobs in that way. Um, and I said, she's amazing. She's, what she's saying is amazing. Uh, she was doing an interview with Walt. And I said, you know, I like you 10% better right now for being married to her. Yes. And he goes, well, and he knew Megan, my wife. And he goes, well, I like you 10% more because you're married to her. And I was like, okay, then. Like, this is it. Um, but he has improved because he's focused. At, he, Gates, Prost, and I'm leaving Epstein stuff out of there. Good, bad, very bad judgment there. Um, but... Um, uh, uh, he, uh, he is focused on climate change, vaccines. Mm -hmm. I think philanthropy, Bill, is a really yeah. different person, yes. right? And has seen the bigger responsibility yeah. because he really was quite a, quite a, 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 I'm not saying villainous, but a figure of great aggression and non-caring about stuff for a long, long time. And so he progressed. And I do mm -hmm. think over history, he's going to be seen in that way, the stuff he's done around vaccines. And by the way, he's endured endless crazy shit around the vaccine stuff. You know, I can't, I can't go anywhere with something you know he's trying to put a chip in our brain. And yeah. I was like, oh, no, he's not. Yeah. He literally got approached by a woman in Seattle who mm -hmm. was like, you're putting chips in us with the vaccine. Yes. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, he doesn't know. He was yes. like, and, but the climate stuff he's doing, the yeah. investments are really interesting. Yeah. Um, he's leading the way on some stuff that is really important, yeah. I think. I, I, I do. I think the climate change stuff alone is really, um, but this stuff he's doing vaccines around malaria, around, yeah. it's really, it is. And I, you know, it, it does it make up for his other behavior, I suppose, you know, in some, people's lives aren't, yeah. one part. It's the yeah. addition and subtraction. Yeah. And he certainly, you know, he really was an aggressive, he sort of was the personification of aggression and monopolistic behavior for a long time. Yeah, well, but that was one of the th reasons I wanted to, actually, we, we got to it in a different path. Mm -hmm. but one of the reasons I want to ask a question, because some of the, this is the kind of young idealist 
descent into bad behavior. Yes, yeah. Right, is one part of the memoir and yeah. the book. But there's also some times where, where you get these people who, who their later phase is like, you know, a champion for the world. And that's part and of not how Not just I, the world, but as a better business person. Yeah. They don't have to like do, they don't have to create vaccines. They yes. don't have to do that. But that they progress. Like, yeah. look, Brian Chesky's a good example. Always a nice guy, by yeah. the way. Never not a nice guy. Um, but, you know, they made some real mess ups at mm. Airbnb. But he learned and he progressed and he admitted and he tried to fix it. And it's, and again, there's all kinds of issues around Airbnb, although now we're not quite as incensed to Airbnb as we used to be. But th there were issues that were clear about renters and things like that. And you at least saw an educational a movement and an acknowledgement of the damage. And that you didn't see. Uh, Evan Spiegel's another person who really was he a tech bro? Like, <laughs> oy, you know, and we had lunch once when he had written some unfortunate emails as a college student. And I never wrote about it because I was like, oh, he's a college. Who cares? Like he, you know, everybody's yeah, that, done that, that, College students, a definition of young. Right. Children. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, well, that was a really obnoxious email, but it's not, not, maybe it's on him. Maybe he's going to change. Maybe we have to be a little more, uh, which I think people would be surprised. I didn't jump on it at all, yeah. that story. A lot of the press did. And he, um, he, we had lunch in Santa Monica and he started yelling at me over the press. And I was like, I'm not the press. Like, there's no <laughs> press. There's me and there's other people. And I don't know what to say. And I said, I'm not going to put up with this shit about your, you wrote bad emails and they're going to write about them. I'm sorry. You're famous now. Oh, well, yeah. you're also really rich. Too bad. And he was like, well, that's not fair. They shouldn't write about it. He goes, that was different me. And I said, Evan, that was two years ago. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you, if at 40 you can say this, yes. right now you can't. It was, how have you progressed in two years? And by the way, he has progressed rather significantly, I would say, um, and has been aware of, he had, they had issues of too many men there, too many, like he, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I appreciate his progression. And so, you know, in a lot of ways, it's a low bar with a lot of people. I'm like, oh, you're actually not, you know, <laughs> behaving. But there's a lot of people who you have to allow to progress yeah. and you have to not. It's a little like the political scene um, where, you know, someone like George Conway, for example, who I have friends with in mm -hmm. Washington and people are like, how can you be friends with him? And I'm like, you know what? At some point we have to let them back. Like we have to like, mm -hmm. you have to allow people to have changed and developed yeah. and be, well, they were there when this, I was like, they were. I don't know what to tell you, but if they're having a change of heart, this is at the heart of our country, which is like, you can redeem yourself. And so some people get mad at me, but I don't give a fuck. I don't, I, if I want, I, like, <laughs> if they're going to show signs of trying to do things, and it's not like, um, you know, Bill Gates is an example. We, we, I was really quite critical of the stuff that Microsoft did, but I'm going to be non-critical. And someone's like, you shouldn't be non-critical. And I was like, you know what? At this point, Liz Cheney is someone I kind of am like, okay, <laughs> yes. like, okay, I'll take it. I'll she's, take it. She's behaving heroically. Yes, that's, it's, that's correct. But at the same time, by the way, her stuff on gay stuff, I, yes. but I brought it up with her I, yes. or her stuff, you know, the war oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, no, she, she, terrible, terrible. Yes. She loves the war. The yes. lady loves the war. So, um, <laughs> so, but so does Hillary Clinton in a lot of ways. So yeah. like, it's, it, you know, it's just, it's you, 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 to be the perfect to, is the enemy of the good, right? Yes. At some point in this country, we have to stop. Like, and what's happened is, this, speaking of Yates, the noisy people are dominating us, the noisy, yeah. self-interested people. And there are a lot. That's why I spend a lot of time in interviews now interviewing people I don't agree with. Quite a few. Mike Gallagher, who I think is a really intelligent person, Ken Buck, all these people. Um, a lot of them are political that I'm just going to engage with because I feel like we've got to come to a common solutions or else the contrarians, for contrarian sake, are going to dominate and destroy all of us in a lot of ways. And it, a lot of them come from tech, this mm. industrial grievance complex of which rich people who are victims. I don't know if you know, <laughs> yes. but it's very hard to be a billionaire and not have everybody <laughs> love you. Yes. You know? Well, that's the Crimea River, which I totally yes. agree. It's yeah, like, look, look, you do not have it hard. It's fine. Yes, they don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, one of the things I thought you did that was uh, genius mm -hmm. um, is uh, you actually use some of their tweets and yes. other criticisms uh, and used it as the book blurbs. Yes. Praise <laughs> right? for Kara Swisher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, do you um, uh, do you think that they that these folks, you know, in that hope of coming back might 
get back to good discourse? Versus... Some of them were bad to begin with, and yeah. several people on the back of that book were. Um, I, I, no, no, I don't. I think mm. either through egomaniacal things or, mm. um, no, some of them are lost causes, absolutely lost causes. Um, I would put Elon among them. Mm. Um, and uh, and they just, they literally just want to watch the world burn. That's what I feel like. They just, they, they want to just uh, be, they're angry and, disaffected and uh, and have means and money to, to make so much damage happen. Mm. And that's what they're doing. Um, but some of them, sure, sure. The reason I did that is I hate blurbs. I hate asking people mm. for favors. And they insult me all the time online. I thought, I'm going to use it for marketing. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, why Genius. Not? Genius. Genius. Why not? If they want to yes. call a lady a bitch, I'm going to use it for marketing. That's fine. <laughs> you know, yes. I, I'm like, Milan, her heart is seething with hate. I'm like, oh. first of all, what bad writing. <laughs> yes. Why not? Yes. Good. I want the haters to buy this just as much. I don't <laughs> yeah, care. Yes, exactly. Twenty-five dollars is twenty-five dollars. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Well, and you know they should. Uh, before these are, by the way, some good questions. So I recommend people, and because some of the ones are ones I was going to get to anyway. Okay. Um, what would you want the people in the tech industry to take away from reading your book? I think one of the th one of the th themes of the book is lack of accountability. Like that, there is no there are no guardrails. That guardrails do not mean lack of innovation. That's the trope you get. Like if you if you fence us in, we shall never be able to create this fine digital dry cleaning service. I was like, <laughs> yes, you will. Every industry in the world has some. Regulation isn't perfect. I agree. There's all kinds of messes. But honestly, none. Like mm. none. Mm. Are you kidding me? You're the richest people in the world. You have no constrict anywhere. Secondly, you're welcome for the internet, you people. It's paid for by the American taxpayer. You're welcome for the data. You're welcome <laughs> for this. Why do you get all the advantages from it? And then tell us how great you are. You're not magicians. You're people. You know, you're not no better than the people who created roads. You're no mm. better than the people who created buildings. Mm. Stop pretending you are gods. Like that is, and you have a responsibility with this great, um, uh, with this great power comes great responsibility, which, you know, they're like Spider-Man. I'm like, no, it's actually goes back, but I'm not going to help you with that. Um, <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you Voltaire. tweeted to me because yes. I said Spider-Man. Like, you said it's Voltaire. It's I was Voltaire. like, I know, know Spider-Man. That right. was the point. I understand. Yeah, I get <laughs> right. it. I, I think you probably did know. It yes, Voltaire. I did. Yes, of course, because you are well-educated and <laughs> roundly educated, which is why I appreciate you. Um, but one of the things, you do have great responsibility and you cannot be careless. And I think it's exemplified by that. The one interview I think that was most important was my interview with Mark, not the sweating one, which was unfortunate, <laughs> but the one later about anti-Semitism where he insists, mm. the Holocaust deniers one, and where he did not understand the implications of allowing anti-Semitic toxic waste to flow over Facebook for as long as it did. And then he stopped it years later, right? He didn't understand that and didn't care to understand. And I think one of the things right now, which was a moment I was hoping for a better outcome, was when he went to Congress and they, Josh, was it Josh Holly or Tom Cotton? Whatever, they're both terrible people. Yes. Um, and I mushed them up into one really yes. loathsome character. Yes. Um, and um, two smart people, by the way, which is very worse. smart and even worse. Very evil. They're not like they're dumb. It's not like it's Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene yeah. wandering around. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is profoundly dumb, let yeah. me just tell you, profoundly. Yeah. But she's a feral sense. She's like, yeah. a, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, uh, so um, she is. She's like, you can see it. It's like, yeah. you know, um, but they, they he made they made him get up and apologize, which I thought was performative bullshit. Like, honestly, if you want something to happen, pass a law. Guess what? You're Congress. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? You're yelling at this guy. He's not going to do it. He didn't do it before. You could you have the power to do it. But you want to have a little scene so you can put it on Twitter or whatever and um, and raise money like screw you like you're I blame them now at this point. Um, so, so he gets up and there's the parents with the pictures, which was, that was a real moment. It wasn't these parents whose kids got hurt because of social media stuff. Um, and it's not the full story, but you could, you should be able to sue Mark Zuckerberg for this and either win or lose in court, right? You can't, you can't. And so 
and I don't mind them losing either. It's just they should be able to have avenues. And I had been struck because I had interviewed one of the Sandy Hook parents, and, and, and Mark and I had a real back and forth about Alex Jones, and uh, who violated the rules over and over, and he did nothing about it. And, um, and the reason the father got to take down a lot of the dreck about it wasn't be appealing to their better nature or anything else. It was because of copyright infringement, mm. which is like sickening that a person who lost their kids has to fight to get really sickening stuff down. And um, so these parents had these pictures, and Mark looked at them, and I know, I, I know you don't believe this, but Mark is actually, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good father, he's a good, mm -hmm. from what I can tell, he's not he a, a loathsome character, he really, he's not a villain, he's just not, and that that's, it makes it harder yeah. uh, for me. And so they put up these pictures, and I could see the person in him see those kids, mm -hmm. and I, I saw him go, Oh my God, like, mm. oh my God, what did I do? Like, I, I did, I saw it there for a second, but then he couldn't do it. He just couldn't get there. And what he said was, I'm sorry for what happened to you versus I'm sorry for what I did, mm. for anything I did that hurt your children. I am, I, this is devastating to me and I know it's devastating to you and I'm, I, I, let, let's talk together. He couldn't do it. He had to say, I'm sorry for what was done to you. And that is not a, an apology. That's like saying, I'm sorry it's raining today. Like, I had nothing to do with the rain. Yeah. And that drove me nuts. And I thought, for a minute, I, I thought he would have a Gates jump, right? Yeah. Like, but he didn't. Although you after, can influence him, I'm sure. Um, although after, you, also, you've been hauled through the public beating and circus of the Congress. It's his part. He took the job. Yeah, he took the job. I understand. But, he gets the money. Yeah. He gets the money. He took the job. He shouldn't have created that if he didn't want the responsibility. It happened to Jerry Yang, too, many years before on China. And this is, you know, uh, this is this is the job. And he, 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 if he doesn't want it, then he should not have full... Hmm. Uh, he should be able to be fired then, and he should leave or whatever if he doesn't want to do the harder, the harder decisions. I get Congress is a ridiculous thing, but they are elected officials, and this is, you know, even if they're acting like speaking of children. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're we, like, ah. yeah, we yeah. can talk about Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So before we go to. By the way, thank you for the Eugene Carroll money. That was nice of you. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Uh, well money well spent. Yes. We paid for. And lots. <laughs> Look. Uh, but again, by the way, Trump can be hauled in court. Yes, like, yes. Why can't everybody? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, look, I'm, uh, uh, I think this election is about upholding the rule of law. I think it's mm -hmm. extremely important. I think Biden is the candidate who's pro rule of law, and Trump is the one who is opposed. And yes. So do it. Um, the, um, before we go to these questions, and you know, some others depending, um, so you know, current, current news is... Elon Musk suing OpenAI. Everybody. <laughs> yes, well, everybody. <laughs> right? It seems that... His has, childhood has, traumas get yes. played out every day for has, us. Has, has, has a metal lawyer he doesn't like, uh, or at least like to employ. Yeah. Um, the, uh, any, any commentary from Carolyn? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'd love to hear what you think, but I think it's a ridiculous nonsense law born of the fact that he's not the cool kid anymore. Mm -hmm. And he was there, and he made a power play. It's all about power. It's yeah. not, he doesn't... Listen, let me tell you, Elon Musk was the first person to talk about AI, advanced AI with me and about the risks, by the way. He was the first person. I think you're the second. Like, mm -hmm. both of you were very early to this. Um, and I think he, he overplayed his hand, as he often does, mm -hmm. at what he did at Twitter when he tried to get out of that deal. Mm -hmm. And he's mad. And so he's using legal means to take out his mistake, his own mistake. And if you're a contract lawyer, I've talked to dozens of them about this because I want to make sure this is nonsense. Mm -hmm. There's no contract. There's no nothing. He made a power play. He lost. He stalk, He walked away. Oh, I'm mad. Someone you called someone a jackass and yes. walked out of there. He loves to do that bullshit because he's a child and um, and he lost and he can't stand it. He can't stand. It. And they, as Scott Gallery said, I think he's right. They he was part of a team and then he tried to take over the team, which is very clear. And he left. He stalked out because he was real mad. And then um, and then they went on to win. The World Series, and he's like, "That was me." Like, yes, it was at the beginning, yes. but he left. Yes. And guess who? You know. And then he's like, "I'm taking away your money." And guess who stepped in? This guy, <laughs> right? Like, yep. he wouldn't pay their rent. What yes. kind of asshole does that, right? Yep. So what a petty asshole. Um, and so, you know, he tried to have control. He's not cool now, and so he's deeply 
profoundly jealous because you know grok okay sure good luck he's, <laughs> he's on a level playing field and he doesn't like level playing fields at and, all and the particular thing that i thought those emails reflected was his whole point was i don't think this will succeed as a nonprofit. i think it should be a company that i own oh, and no. control <laughs> and and now and now you're not doing the nonprofit thing and you're oh, working with nonsense. a company <laughs> it's nonsense yes. he doesn't care elon musk doesn't care about anyone but himself i'm yeah. sorry he's a most self-absorbed uh, it, person in need of therapy that I've ever seen. I mean, he's not going to get it because that would require self-reflection and he doesn't have it. I mean, it's a mirror. He can see himself in a mirror. Did, so. did, you, uh, <laughs> did you write a review of Walt's book? Walt's book? Not Walt's book. Um, uh, uh, Isaacson. I, I had a very big to do with it. Uh, okay. If you want to listen to a podcast that's very spicy, listen to it. Yes. I thought it was a, a, a tongue bath and I thought it was full of errors actually. <laughs> and I think, you know, including what I thought was the, I, even though it made seem prurient, the drug use was, a, it was not in there. I told him about it. I, yeah. everyone know, knew about it. Yeah. And I thought the journal did a really good, solid, well-reported story. And it doesn't mean it's everything, mm. but you have to acknowledge it. And the more important story in the journal was not the I like ketamine, I like to give it to myself. I'm like, look, people, this is San Francisco, do what you want, but don't pretend that this board is in any way governing this company. And when the journal showed um, the money these people were, wasn't that astonishing to you? That money these board members are making? It was capitalism after all, right? <laughs> yes. He gets to do what he wants because they're being paid off, essentially. And so, you know, it's one of the elements you have to put in there. And so I thought that book was just, just very much a a typed, uh, I like Walter, he's a friend of mine, yes. but I brought, I brought up with him publicly that I thought he missed, you know, this whole demons thing and the, the idea that he has demons, Kara. I'm like, I don't care. I have demons. I had a <laughs> shitty stepfather. <laughs> Guess what? I had a cruel, my father died. Yeah. Am I going around and being anti-Semitic and being anti-gay and anti-trans? And by the way, he has a trans kid. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, are you, you, you don't, I don't do that. And I'm sorry, every day it's one more. The immigration thing this week was mm. loathsome, loathsome. Mm. How dare he do that and make up shit? Like, and thank God for Mark Cuban for, yes. you know, thank God I, you know, who has evolved. Another yeah. evolving character. Yeah. Yes. Boy, was he a bro. Do you remember him with the bro days? He was <laughs> yes. bro, bro, bro. <laughs> and now, and I, it's not because I agree with him, because yes. we don't often. Yes. He and I argue about the wealth tax all the time. But, um, but he, like, he laid out the DEI. Mark Cuban, if you go and look at what he did, he got on Twitter and started laying out why D DEI was important to his companies. And he talked about his experience. Here's why I like it. You don't have to. This was our experience. I was wrong here. I did this. It was not virtue signaling in any way. It was a very good primer about how he changed. And, and I thought it was great. And when he was doing it, I texted him. I'm like, Godspeed. What are you doing? They're going to come after you. And they did. And, and instead of having a discussion about DEI, which we absolutely should, it, it, you know, and by the, by the way, diversity, the opposite, homogeneity, that's not good. Mm. Secondly, uh, inclusion. Oh, exclusion is so much better. <laughs> yes. like, let's exclude people. Yes. That's a nice way to yes. conduct a country. Yes. And then um, equity. Oh, no, unfairness. <laughs> yes. Don't you believe in unfairness? Because I do. Yes. You know, the whole thing is ridiculous. The same thing with woke. The opposite yes. of woke is asleep. Yes, exactly. Like, yes. Need stop. Yes. You need to stop. Which, which is the reason why they keep saying anti-woke. It's like, They're like, well, that's you're asleep. asleep. You're asleep, <laughs> you stupid. Anyway, I just, and, and the response from Elon on this thing, when he, Mark thought, but a thoughtful thing was, you're a moron. Ooh, boobs like what like <laughs> come on you're not a serious if you don't want to be a serious person get off the stage and and if you want to you want to real but he can't because he's an attention sponge uh and it's, it's he, he needs it to survive like so he does whatever antics he can do um and the same thing with now it's a disease of a lot of these people and uh you know like bill ackman like with his what does he know he's a rich guy who gave to harvard and was mad now he's an expert on dei i don't think so <laughs> and i was joking to read backstage i'm going to do a 90 part series on hedge fund investing of which i know nothing <laughs> like because i can't yes. why not I'm I, Kara yes. Swisher, I feel I should be able to pontificate on these topics. Yes. Like, whatever. So, um, like, I was like, you have a really nice looking wife who's super smart. Like, enjoy your children. Yeah. Like, stop yeah. it. Yeah. Neri is spectacular. But, but yes. Neri Alex Absolutely. Um, the, um, so now back to serious questions. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'll ask the specific one from the audience, but then also broaden a little bit. Is the specific is uh, where is the line in journalism between news reporting and editorial advocacy, but also wither journalism. Wither. Right? Yes. Ah, the wither question. Yes. 
Um, I think we, we changed, I, I've already gone down this road. One of the reasons, I was a beat reporter, so you really couldn't. You're like, this happened to read, he invested in LinkedIn, whatever, news stories, right? We did a million of those, and that's just, a, that's just news, and that's the way it was, that's what you did. Um, when I left and did All Things D with Wald, we decided to change rather significantly. Where it wasn't advocacy, it's here's, we did the reporting, and this is our conclusion. And I thought that was more valuable to audiences. It's not advocacy, I don't think. Walt is the perfect example of this. I tested everything, and now I'm telling you, I like this or I don't like this, or it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. And so what we did at All Things D was get rid of the, at the Wall Street Journal, whenever I would do like reporting on, say, Webvan. And by the time I looked at it, I was like, this is a disaster, because I can do math, and it, the things aren't in place. Not to say the idea wasn't good, but it's not gonna work. And so I would write a story, I'd say, this isn't gonna work. And my editors would be like, can you get someone else to say that? And I was like, but I'm saying it. I'm saying it for my reporting. And so one of the things, I don't consider it advocacy. I'm telling you, I looked into it, and this is, and either I'm right or wrong, but I did the reporting, and I don't think this is going to work. And I think a really good example of this, it, tell me if this is advocacy. I wrote a column in the New York Times, and I said, if Trump loses the election, and this was about his use of Twitter and everything else, because um, I thought it, would be, it was called, it's, he's become too dangerous. I said, if he loses the election, what he's going to do is he's going to go on and on about that it was stolen, that there were lies, that it was stolen, it was stealing, it was, that there was fake this, fake that. I said, it's going to go up and down the right-wing eco ch chamber, and then, he, and then after several weeks, uh, he's going to try to stop it, in the, it's going to jump into the real world, and he's going to ask his followers, who he's now radicalized, to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I wrote that in 2019, October, right? I, I, yeah. Right. Yeah. At the time I wrote it, the Twitter people, and, the, and I said, and the Facebook Twitter people are, are handmaidens to sedition. This is what's going to happen, right, essentially. And they called me. They're like, how could you advocate and say something like that? How could you do that? I said, I'm, I'm just guessing what's happening based on what's happened before and the power of this guy online. I'm not advocating. I'm telling you what's going to happen because I did the reporting and I feel like this is what the natural, my best guess as to what's going to happen is this. And, you know, it was, I was right. And so I don't think it's advocacy. Um, and as to journalism, I think what we did at All Things Do was pioneering in terms of doing that, giving people like, here's what we think. We had the longest disclosure statements. You know, here's who we are. My, my wife worked for Google. By the way, I never got any stock in it. We had separate money and stuff like that. And, or Peter Kafka, this is what I did. This is where I came from. We had long disclosures because we believe in our audience. We think they are smart enough to decide if we're in the can or not, right? That's one. The other is radical candor with them. It's like, you don't have to agree with us, but we think this is the way it's going to go. You either, we're either right or we're wrong, and we'll know in the end. Um, but we felt that you added great reporting or live journalism like we did on stage at Code. And we, um, we had a, just a different thing. We, we, we respected our audience. And I think a lot of media didn't do that. The second thing is media didn't change their economics at all. Mm -hmm. Like, they saw it coming. And I, even back in the 90s, I was like, classifieds are fucked. Like, hey, <laughs> over here, <laughs> Craigslist. You might want to look. Yeah. Same thing with display advertising. Same things with the subscription. They saw it coming, and they never got the technical chops necessary. And then they trusted the tech, the tech companies didn't want to get into media. And tech companies wanted to get into media. They wanted to get into advertising. That's what, and they just let it go. And I, don't, I think it's a very simple thing to me, because I've created every business I've created is prof, very profitable, by the way. And so I have created businesses so they're profitable. So when someone comes to me, I, I, I happen to own them now, so I don't really, no one comes to me. <laughs> but when they did at the Wall Street Journal and they're like, Garrett, I'm like, go away. <laughs> I, did you get the million dollars I sent you last week? Get the hell away from me. Like, move along. <laughs> so they couldn't argue with me. So you have to m match your costs and your revenues mm. and the stuff you're making has to be valuable to the audience. It has to be a product that's, fat. and I hate to use the word product, but that's what it is. It's called the news business. It's mm. show business. Mm. This isn't a romantic thing. If you want to stay in business, you've got to reconcile that. And if you don't, you're screwed. You really, truly are. You are. So I'm going to ask you this next question in part because I think it uh, has an entertaining, reflective okay. element. Um, since personally, my uh, 
co-founding Inflection with Mustafa, investing in AI, mm -hmm. um, Series A in Aurora and autonomous vehicles. So That's like, this car. That yeah, car stuff that itself. I've been doing. So I will write, read the question verbatim because okay. it, it has that entertaining reflective remark. The tech industry's focus on AI, autonomous vehicles, and space exploration seems like fiddling while Rome, aka the Earth, burns. Mm -hmm. What, if anything, could focus our best and brightest and resources to solving the climate crisis before it's too late? You know, I don't think that's actually true. I, I think there's a lot of investment being made in climate tech. I've seen, and by the way, speaking of diverse, you can. F it's a much more diverse set of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and, re and, and really mission-based, really truly mission-based. Look, I don't care if they become true. I wrote a column a couple of years ago in the Times where I said the world's first trillionaire is going to be a climate change tech person. I just made it up. Um, but I did it because I wanted to inspire them to like, I mean, this is where you really should, you can make money. This could possibly make money, which is, I'm only doing it because look, money, like <laughs> go, go do this. Money yeah. is over here. And it's also, we're going to not, we're going to die if you don't, like kind of thing. <laughs> so it's existential. I believe climate changes are absolute existential thing. And I think not, tech is not going to solve everything, mm. but it need, we need to bring to bear our greatest minds on this problem. It, 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 is, it is the most important issue. Yeah. You know, Oppenheimer's about to win. It, that was the big thing where all the great minds went to. We need to bring our greatest minds, including government. There has to be government, private sector, everything else. Space exploration, I know it seems like a bunch of penis rockets. I get it. They look like <laughs> penises. I get it. <laughs> There's no question. Um, but we do have to think about a multiplanetary civilization. We cannot pretend this Earth is, look, inevitable. Even if it wasn't a climate crisis, every planet dies. They just do. That seems to be the, the thing. So we, if we want to continue, well, maybe we just go. That could be another thing. Like, OK, that's the end of that. Um, but That's a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but the sun's going to explode someday. It yeah, is. Okay. It just is. That's enough years out. In the far, that's definitely far enough in the future that maybe, we can worry about later. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but here's oh, the deal. Physics. But my, yes, OK, thank you. Um, Multi-planetary species, I think, is important. Yeah. I don't love that it's now so privatized, mm -hmm. I think there's dangers in that, that it's mm -hmm. Elon and Jeff Bezos essentially are doing, it, and then the Chinese and Russians. So I do think that our government abrogated is supposed to be pulling away, and that's because of pressure, political pressures of investing. We should be investing in that. We really should. Be. And, and, and thinking about what that, yeah. does that mean? Who owns it? We don't want to get to total recall where some guy owns Mars, right? Which yeah. is where we're headed, aren't we? Um, if you saw it, it's a great movie. Do the Schwarzenegger version. It was such a <laughs> yeah, good movie. The Schwarzenegger movie. version. And John Lithgow is the yeah. owner of Mars, right? Yeah. Um, I, think that's, I think that's important. I, I, it was the throw in EVs. I do think EVs are important, I'm sorry. And so are autonomous. I know San Francisco's all, all, but let me tell you who's the problem in this thing. People driving, should not be driving. It's inefficient, yeah. it's energy. They staffing. get drunk. They get everything. It doesn't matter. One of the things when I know there's complaints from the fire department stuff about EV, I mean, autonomous vehicles. And I, and I called them. I'm like, how many people get in the way of your trucks? They're like, um, and I go, how many the cars? And they said three. And I said, how many people? They said 4,000. <laughs> and I was like, OK, so let's try to like think about it. So I agree with you. It's not ready for prime time. There's too much beta testing by tech companies on every product. And I get the pushback. But people should not be driving cars. There should be autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles will be are one of the ways we can do that. It's among many. Fast clothing is another one. You'd be surprised what actually eats up the environments. Mm -hmm. Methane is another thing. Mm -hmm. the cow, cows, I know it sounds dumb, but there's all this cool stuff being invested in how to make cows not produce methane. Like, that's really important. Yeah. Um, some of the healthcare stuff is astonishing that's happening. I just, right now, there's a podcast with me and Reed Jobs, which is Steve Jobs' son. Mm -hmm. He's doing a thing called Yosemite, which is doing all kinds of, re with Jennifer Dowden, all these amazing cancer stuff in terms of making cancer non-lethal um, going forward. I mean, there's, there is a lot of stuff happening. It's just that w what's happened is we're, we're all staring at Elon like we're staring at Trump. That, both dangerous people, by the way, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, and in, important to watch, by the way. Not, I'm not, they're not clowns by any, although they are clowns. Um, but um, but y we're not looking at the things. They're making us look at them because they're addictive in that regard. And we can't get out of our rage against them. I and mean, we should have rage. But it's what are we going to do with the rage? And so there, but there is all this really cool stuff happening. The, the other thing I would add, um, 
is actually, in fact, a bunch of tech people are doing stuff mm -hmm. on the climate change. I mean, this harkens back to the, you know, the, the second chapter on the Gates story, which is Breakthrough mm -hmm. Energy Ventures, and mm -hmm. a bunch of uh, nuclear fusion and other kinds of Yeah, the fusion stuff is really yeah. interesting. There's all kinds. And what it, it is, again, the Paul Virilio thing is let's have ships for all of us, yeah. right? Yes. Not for just the billionaires, right? Yes. Let's do that. And let's put a lighthouse in. And we can't, you literally, I'm sorry, again, be an adult. There's going to be problems, look, but we have to mitigate and 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 focus on safety and data protection and privacy. The fact that we don't have a national privacy bill is is shameful in this country, um, and and all kinds of bills. Like Amy Klobuchar texts me every day. She's like, once again, they took away the money I raised for antitrust fees uh, that she passed. That's our only thing she could get passed, and they've taken the money from the Justice Department. Like, and I was like. This is the way it goes. If we don't invest in that kind of stuff for safety, we're and and where we get the American people and the get their due, we're going to degenerate into mm -hmm. a decision making process where billionaires get to make our decisions. And some of them are good, some of them are bad, but it's not a world I want to live in mm. for sure. So um, I'm going to paraphrase this question about which pioneers, <laughs> tech pioneers, did. Did you decide not to write about or hit the cutting room floor? What was it, the, the paraphrase is kind of like what? Who did I leave out? And and like what was the decision to put in versus leave out? Sometimes I just forgot about people. Like I covered <laughs> it's thirty years now, and I you know I went through some of my stories. And I'm like I don't even remember writing them. Like I was like, did I write that? That was good, you know, like or something like that. And I would um, so, so I just I think I just um, interestingly enough, the person who helped me was Nell Scoble, who helped Cheryl yeah. write her book Lean In. I think Nell is wonderful. Um, uh, I I just was like, what struck me? What did I remember? And what resonated with me? I wrote tons about. Yahoo, it's, there's not, it's not in here. I didn't think it was per, important anymore, right? It was a thing of the past. Um, I've written books about AOL. I didn't want to repeat that stuff. I obviously think it's important. Um, but I wanted to stick with the people who resonated most with me and that, not that I covered the most, because a lot, some people I covered a lot. Um, other things, I, I, I just forgot them. I just forgot them. And I don't, I, nothing was in the cutting room floor. I did not put, a. a personal stuff that I thought was damaging. I just didn't, it was yeah. my business. It's not my business how people want to conduct yeah. their personal. So you're trying to improve how the industry impacts humanity. The business, society. I, yes. I, sent to the, I stuck to the business. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what I left out. I, nothing was cutting room stores. It's what I, I, I spent a lot of time talking to Nell, uh, figuring out what I remembered, and then we shaped it around the themes. And the themes are about everything that can be digitized will be digitized the lack of safety, lack of accountability, consequences, mm -hmm. um, and where we need to go and sort of get back, and I'm not saying to a centrist place, but to a sane place. Um, so this next question is in the vector. Um, so oh, one more thing, I'm oh. sorry, the deleterious effect of wealth on many people, that was something that you know it hasn't affected you. You're the same person, but people are often the same people they are when they get wealthy, it's just their worst characteristics tend to mm -hmm. come out. Um, Roger McNamee wrote Zucked. Um, I actually disagreed with that book intensely. Oh, what did you think? Um, Roger, is a, Roger has a point of view. I, I appreciate his point of view. I think he was sort of all in on the tech. Talk about someone who was such a cheer, not, not just a cheerleader. He just really believed. Mm. That's a guy who really believed in, mm. in, the, in, the, in the positive effects of tech. He really did. And he's very enthusiastic. Mm. So um, uh, we had an interview where he, they created the pre, remember the pre? Um, and he put it out in front of me. This was the worst moment for him. But he puts it out, the pre, which was one of the early phones. And he goes, look, it has a mirror on the back for the ladies. And I literally was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, did you just say that to Kara Swisher? Yeah. I, said, you, I said, I thought you were smart. Yes. And then I ripped into him. Yes. I was like, are you, yes. Who's the most vain people on earth? Not the ladies. Yes. Um, and, um, and this is a woman who has three sons. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I, I see why he did it. I think he, he, some people, when they get the religion, and realize the the damage. I think you may not have liked it, but he's turned out rather right on a number of issues, including self-esteem of girls, include mm -hmm. damage, include. So I think directionally, he's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. He, I think he was. He had to make. He, he's. He felt bad because he was part of it, and so you often like get that like. 
emotion. And so I don't, I think directionally he's 100% correct. And the things, the, the dangers he was talking about really did come true. So in that way, I would disagree with you on that book. Mm. Um, but I do think he, you know, a convert is the most intense of all people, convert, people who have shifted. You know, yeah. So. The thing in the discourse that uh, I think is underappreciated about you that I really actually think is important is to actually be somewhat more nuanced. Because, yes. Because, you know, the, 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 like, for example, uh, in the whole convert point, like, uh, Roger wasn't that close to it. Right. Right. I mean, and so a little bit of the, oh, look, I'm I was really close to it. I was the one right. who did this, who did this damage. And it's like, well, actually, in fact, you weren't that close to it. Right. And I get it. But that's like inside baseball of Silicon yeah. Valley. Oh, he wasn't yeah. as important as he, he wasn't in the room. Well, that, but it's a little bit of like, I'm, I'm trying to still be important by saying, oh, look how bad course. and evil it is. Yes. It's like, look, it's Imagine tech people narcissism. I yes. can't believe yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's narcissistic. Yes. Everybody's. No, actually, I'm an egomaniac. That's different. So. <laughs> Everybody um, is. Everybody feels like they were the ones. But, you know, as a reporter, you'd go into a story and everyone was responsible. Even the stuff we, Walt and I created, there's a joke in the book where at Dow Jones, it literally was just Walt and I. Let me just be clear. And they also just spent zero money because we made money from the get-go. I think they gave us the deposit for the hotel and then we paid them back a day later, essentially. <laughs> so no money was spent by Dow Jones. But we had so many people go, oh, I am the father of D or whatever. And I was like... <laughs> You're the fucking distant cousin we don't invite to Thanksgiving. That's who you are. But that happens all the time. Yes. Oh, I was there. Yes. I was like, you had nothing to do with it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, sure, yeah, yeah. you were there. You weren't, you know. Well, success has yes, many, many, many parents. Many and parents. failure, failure That's suddenly correct. is an orphan. That's correct. That's <laughs> yes. why I try not to fail. Yeah. Um, so um, just because, and we only have two minutes left. Right. Okay. Um, but... You know, the, the de jure topic of AI mm -hmm. and tech industry. Yeah. Kara, what Kara. would you have to say about AI? I think you have to, again, nuanced, right? This yeah. is really where it is. And I think you have these techno optimists who are, and I think, you know, this market, go we'll read the market yeah. if you have to, because it's really bad. Well, written. I think that's the blind. That's the blind techno yeah. optimist. Yeah. But it's like, you're either with us or against us. This is going to solve everything. I'm like, so far, it hasn't solved everything. I, I, can't, I, I never believe anybody. So the techno-optimist school is really exhausting. I find them exhausting, and because it's not going to fix everything. The techno-decelerationists can be just as problematic. Like, I had one person call me saying, if, if, we didn't, if I didn't stop Sam Altman, all humanity was going to die. <laughs> and I was like... You want me to attack another gay person? No. <laughs> um, and no, but I was, I was like, like I, I literally was like, that's Terminator. That's the plot of <laughs> Terminator. And I'm not Linda Evans, and I do not have a giant gun. So You're also not Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> right. I was like, he's not. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just not true. There's all kinds of good things. And so I think the reason I think this book, which was very late, actually, I was m much later than I wanted to be writing it, was because right now we are at a cusp. And so I'm trying to get people, like, pay attention because it can go a good way, like the Star Trek version of the universe, like I talked about. It can go a good way if we put things in place. Mistakes will be made along the road. Mm. But there is so much promise here, especially around cancer, around healthcare, and all kinds of things that you can just see. You can just see them. At the same time, I can see the problems, like drones, control, autocrats. It's all there, and it's all there for them. Um, and so I prefer people like you. I prefer people like Fei Fei Li, like who are not, they're not screaming at me from either side here. Mm. And it's just not true over here. And you people, you techno-optimist needs to be quiet because of all the damage you've done. You, let's, let's have some other people involved in the discussion. And, uh, you know, Tech people are remarkable, but so were the people who created lots of stuff. Hollywood, whatever. Name your industry. Name your wonderful thing for humanity. And by the way, the real amazing people are the scientists who create all kinds of vaccines. Like, that's the real. Come on, stop it. Like, they're not magicians. They're regular people with huge amounts of flaws. And that's what I was trying to put. These are... Do not worship these people. They're false idols. Mm. And um, at the same time, don't hate them. Mm. They're also, some of them are trying. Some of them are just bad people. Some of them are good people. And have a little more presence of mind to understand the difference kind of stuff. And so that's what I was trying to do, pretty much. So uh, let's give a hand to the amazing Paris Thank you. Thank you to Reed. And let me just say, let me, let me just say this about Reed. 
there's a chapter of, in the book called People I Like, which is a small chapter. <laughs> um, and Reed is one of them. And I have to say, he's always, like an adult does, he's been willing to debate. We have disagreed on, t remember that yeah, first meeting? Course, we were like, course, no, you're wrong. Yes. LinkedIn, LinkedIn was it, it <laughs> yes. LinkedIn. Yes. Um, he's willing to debate, disagree, um, listen. I had a lot of problems with him, with the teal stuff, with him hanging in. But he was, uh, he stuck to his guns, and I have to say, uh, has always tried to do the right thing and been thoughtful about it. And that is extraordinarily rare. It really is. And so this is the kind of people, if you need to worship a tech person, and please don't. <laughs> no, 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 please. This, this is an inspirational figure. It's someone who's done a lot of great things, who's contributed more than he's taken. And, um, you know, if you want to, like, love someone who, you know, like the, the worship of Elon or something like that, this is the anti one. This is the anti version of that. And while well, he is a tech bro. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, tech. I don't know about bro. OK, you're not a bro. <laughs> I would say you're a les bro is what I yes. call him now. <laughs> yes. OK. He's a les bro. And we should appreciate it. From you, I might actually. I'm going to get you a T-shirt. Yes. That'd be great. <laughs> um, anyway, you should appreciate people like him and encourage that. Um, at the same time, don't stroke his ego, you know. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. And he does have a responsibility. He's been made very wealthy and very powerful through tech. Yeah. He owes it back to yes, the world that, that he, that what yeah. he's been given to. And so, our responsibility. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, he's terrific. And thank you for doing yeah, that. Thank you, Chris.